Hello guys, today will be a live demo video, live coding, answering this question. Uh, Robert asked, could you create a video explaining how to submit a form using Laravel and Vue.js? And in his example it was contact form, but I decided to make it a little more uh, useful and we will transform this form for ticket. It's a default Laravel form, so I've created a blade form, totally working with controller and everything, and we'll transform that from blade and controller to Vue.js and API. And it's just a ticket adding form. I will use a form filler here to fill in the fields. So there is a category seated, you submit a ticket and you have the validation error. Uh, also validation is present and we will also transform that to Vue.js and then there is a ticket table. In the code it's a simple controller, tickets index, tickets create form and ticket store with ticket create. That's it. In the web it's route resource. And in the create blade form, it's a simple form method post to route ticket store. So that's a pretty typical Laravel backend form. And now let's transform that to Vue.js. First thing we need to do is replace our form with a Vue.js component that we will create. So instead of that form, we will have, for example, ticket create, something like that. And ticket create will be a Vue.js component, which will have all that form. We cut that and paste into a component and that component will be created in resources.js, components, new file, ticket create dot view. And every Vue.js component has two sections, template and script. So in template, we need to paste the form. So this will be our template. And of course, in the template, we don't have blade syntax anymore. So we need to delete something for now. And our first milestone will be compiled Vue.js component ticket create with some elements missing on the form. And then we will add them one by one. So for now, our form don't have action, don't have CSRF and error is also from blade. And I will just delete some stuff quickly. Error validation also will be added a bit later. And same with all other fields. For ticket category dropdown, there was a for each and we will for now delete that in total. We will load the values for ticket category as a separate subsection, sub lesson. So for now, our select will be empty. Okay, I think I removed all the blade and now let's add a script section, which for now would be export default and empty. Now let's go to our app.js, main resources.js app.js. And this is by the way generated because I've installed Laravel project with auth. There is a separate video how Laravel with auth installation includes app.js and example component in the view. So I will link that in the description. So now in app.js we have basic things for loading Vue.js an even basic component as an example, but instead of that example component, we do ticket create and then ticket create.view. And also we need to make sure that we have element app in the blade. So in our create blade, it extends layouts app. So we open app blade and we wrap everything with an app which already exists. So we don't need to change anything here, but if your blade file doesn't contain this, you have to add that probably as the main element of the body. So let's try it out. We need to compile our JavaScript, the ticket create view and app.js that we just edited with two terminal commands, which is npm install first. And npm install will load all the packages from package.json which comes with Laravel by default and it will compile, it will download all the packages into node modules subfolder. It's similar to composer JSON with Laravel. It's just package JSON for NPM to download all the libraries similar to vendor folder in Laravel. Okay, it is successful and then we run NPM run dev. It will compile our JavaScript into one JavaScript file, public JS app.js. Compiled successfully. And our compiled app.js, public app.js, should be included in the main blade. In my case, I'm using app blade from default Laravel auth, so this is included by default in the head section. If you don't have that line, then include it somewhere in the head or before body closing. And there we go, the same form just loaded with ticket create with our new Vue.js component. 
And as a proof of that, there is no category, there is no option loaded in the option, which is the proof that is loaded from Vue.js and not from Blade. So let's take care about that first. Let's load the categories. And we will load the categories from the API. So whenever the page is loaded, the API call will be done and then that dropdown will get the options. If we go to the console, browser console, refresh the page, you will see categories API call, which returns data and array of all the categories. So first from the backend, I've made a controller, PHP Artisan make controller, API category controller, which is an API subfolder with one method index, which uses API resource, Laravel Eloquent API resource, which returns only two fields, ID and name. So we don't need that created add or any other fields. We need just ID and name of the category. And it loads all the categories with category all. And it's used in API PHP routes file. It should be one API call, but I've made it route API resource just for the future. So slash API slash categories will be category controller index method. So that's backend. On the front end in view file, we start to use our script section. So in script, we have to have categories as a variable of data. And then whenever the component is mounted, there are two possible methods here, created and mounted, and they are almost the same in this case. So in this case, both will be okay. So we're doing Axios get, so we're getting that API data, API categories, and then on the response, we assign response data data to this category. So this variable will be prefilled with data of response. And keep in mind that response is a general response. Response data is the actual Laravel created thing, Laravel return thing, and data is a default wrapper by API of Laravel, which is inside of this, so here. That's why it looks pretty weird, but that is the correct way, response data data. And then how do we use those categories? In the template part, where we have that dropdown, which was empty, we added this. It's a for loop in Vue.js syntax, for categories or for each of the categories. As category, we are doing option with value category ID and text category name. And again, as you can see, I can refresh again, empty, and then it's loaded. Now let's work on actually submitting the form. To submit the form, we will do a post request with that data included. So all of that data should be in the Vue.js property variable. So at the script level, we should have something like fields and fields will be an object. And then every actual field in the form should be with V model. So V model fields dot something. In our case, name will be fields name, then copy paste to your email address is fields email. Then category ID should be V model fields category ID and description, text area, the model, description. Okay, so whenever those values change in the visual form, that variable should change automatically. Next, we need to have submit method. So we add methods, and the method will be submit. And this is the first version I've copied and pasted from elsewhere. We will do post request to API tickets to store one ticket with this fields as a parameter. And then if it's successful, we will just clear the fields for now. And a bit later in the lesson, we will fill it in with validation, with success error and all of that. To create API tickets endpoint, we will do PHP artisan make controller API ticket controller. Then we open that ticket controller. In fact, we have two controllers now, API and non-API. So for non-API, we can actually copy and paste from regular ticket controller store, so this. So copy everything here. We'll have store method. Store ticket request is the same request for the validation. I will open it up to show you. So we have rules for name, email, everything is required and description is minimum 20 symbols. Then we have ticket autocomplete with PHP storm. So we create the ticket and the difference between API controller and non-API, API shouldn't redirect anywhere. It should return the ticket. So ticket 
and then we return that ticket. And actually, we don't even need that variable. Let's do directly return ticket create like this. And then in API PHP, we will do probably another API resource for the future tickets, ticket controller. And let's try it out. We do npm run dev, or you can do npm run watch. Actually, let's do it now. So npm run watch will be watching for any changes of your JavaScript and automatically compile that. So whenever we change something in PHP Storm, it will be automatically recompiled. And I forgot one more thing. We need to actually call that method submit. And we will call that with form submit prevent equals submit. There are a few ways how to deal with that. In reality, it may be not even a form because we're doing post request, not with form. Actually, we can delete that as well, but this should work. And let's see if it was successfully recompiled. Probably it was. And let's refresh our page. So this is our form. I've opened the network to see if there are any errors. So we enter something and submit the ticket. As you can see, it was successful. Status 201 return the ticket and if we see ticket list which is non-view it is laravel yep this ticket was successfully submitted so this is how you submit the form from Vue.js and call the api to actually store the data but that's not all there are a few things we need to take care of short notice about csrf token as you see in this video we didn't pass any csrf token so in the view we just did axios post so in theory, there should be CSRF validation and form should have failed, right? But again, with default Laravel auth in app blade PHP, there is this line. So it says the global CSRF token for Vue.js requests. So if you don't have that, then you need to manually create that CSRF token and pass that to the view. Now let's take care of the success message. So instead of redirecting to somewhere, we will clear the fields. It will still be okay, but we will show some kind of alert that it was successful. So in our ticket view, we will have at the top, we will have div class alert, alert success, ticket created successfully. But we need to hide it from the beginning, right? So we'll use the show success and we'll have a variable success, which is by default false. So success false and it will become true only with this. No, not that one. This fields and this success equals true. And it is recompiled again by npm run watch. And let's try again. Reload the form, fill it in with something, submit ticket, ticket created successfully. Now let's take care of the validation messages. For that, we will have another property variable, success and errors. Errors will be an object. For now, it's empty because there are no errors. And in the cache section, we will have this errors equals error, so this one, then response, data, and errors. This is how Laravel returns the errors. And also we need to check the status code. Default validation status code for Laravel is 422. So if error response status equals 422, then we do this. Now, how do we use those errors? In every field, so for example, here in the name, we will have div class alert, alert danger, and it will be the show only when there's errors and errors dot name specifically. And inside of that div, it will be the syntax is errors name zero. So first error on the name field. Let's try it out. And the first validation, actually the actual real validation we will see is on the text area. So let's add it on the text area here for the description. So errors description. 
because if we make it lower than 20 symbols, it will show up. In fact, it is better to use v if than v show in this case, because otherwise we will get errors that this is undefined. So v if it is recompiled, and let's try again. Reload the page, fill in the form, but with some validation, submit ticket. And as you can see, API shows 422 error, which is expected. Also error from the console, and that is shown. So what we need to do is add the same alert to other fields as well. I will do that quickly. So for email and for category ID. So category ID zero. We took care of the errors. There are a few more things we can do in this video to make form really pretty, but I'll probably leave it to you as a homework. So what you can do on this form is add the loader. So whenever that button is clicked, it should be disabled and there should be a loader on the screen while the API hasn't returned the error or success. And related to that, if the submit is successful, that should be deleted and that should be deleted on the second submission of the form. Actually, the first part we can do quickly. So on success, we need to clear the errors. So this success true and this errors equals empty object. Refresh the page, uh, fail the validation the first time, or actually was 20 symbols. Submit the ticket, first error, but then add some more symbols, successful, and error is gone. So you can play around with this form. The code will be available on GitHub as usual. And I hope it showed you the basic things, how to deal with forms in Vue.js and Laravel. I'm planning to shoot more videos on Laravel and Vue.js and to support me, to support this channel, you can do one of two things. First, go to laraveldaily.teachable.com and enroll in any of my courses. Or you can use our Laravel admin panel generator, which is at quickadminpanel.com. And any support, any financial support from those products makes me more free to shoot videos like this one. And subscribe to the channel and see you guys in other videos.